Hey guys, do you know why this 2011 Ford F-150 has a license plate that's not in the center, but on the left-hand side here on the driver's side? Well, some of you probably know this, um, and I'll show you why in this video. This just happens to be a 2011 Ford F-150. It looks very normal, right? It looks very basic, but it's actually the first year of the EcoBoost engine. So let's take a look at the profile of this truck and take a look here. EcoBoost. Yep, so right now, I mean, Ford sells about 500,000 F-150s approximately every year, and most of them are turbocharged. They have a 2.7 liter twin turbo V6 or a 3.5 twin turbo V6. But this is the OG, this is the original 2011. Okay, not the first truck. This is my buddy Luke's F-150. Let me open the hood really quick and we can dig in and look inside. This was a huge deal back in 2011 because back then and still now a lot of the Ford enthusiasts like you loved and still love V8 engines. And then Ford decided to do something new and they came up with this. You can even see this engine cover. And this is a real truck. I'll show you the mileage. We'll go for a drive in it and you can kind of get a taste for what this is like. They said, you know what? We can get more torque and a little bit better power, actually way more torque, and still truck capability with turbocharging, not a large displacement V8 like an older 5.4 liter V8 that was in these trucks or a five liter V8 that was in this particular truck as well. They said three and a half liters, EcoBoost power, we can do it. And this is why they put the license plate on the side because they needed air to come in here. So check this out, come in, come in here just for a second. This is basically the intercooler and it's sitting here. I mean, there is a lot, of, a lot going on here. This cooling stack is really deep and big, but they wanted to get as much air coming into this intercooler as possible. And of course, this is their older design where the grill kind of came up uh, along with the hood. And this is also a huge year for Ford. And we can do another video. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you want to see it, because in 2011 was also the first year of the 6.7 V8 Power Stroke diesel in the Super Duty trucks. It was also basically the first year or the second year of the Ford SVT Raptor. So this was a huge time for Ford. And by the way, yes, this truck is 13 years old and it's got an aftermarket air intake system. And look over the years, you know, he's had it for what, like several years, right? A couple years. And he changed it up a little bit with some shocks. You can kind of tell here, there's a little bit of a Fox coil over here in the front. Um, and tires are KO2 BFGs. And of course, he's got kind of a camping solution here as well with a large, tall topper. So this, is, this has been used as a truck. It's four by four. He's got his bicycle carriers here in the back. It's a pretty standard fare. Uh, by the way, some of the parts have faded over the years, like this uh, emblem here in the back is a little bit faded, a little bit discolored. But overall, this is still when F-150s were not aluminum. Aluminum came in 2015. Here you go. So this truck was built in August of 2011. You can see 0811 right there. And this truck, let me show you. If you walk around here, it has right here 1,556 pound, pounds of payload. So actually pretty good payload. And it's, it's basically a extended cab, super cab they called it, with clamshell doors and kind of a six person arrangement because this third seat comes up. All right, so jump in with me and let's fire this engine up and see how she drives. Let me get the crap camera really quick while, while Luke actually buckles up and uh, then we can go for a drive. Yeah, so, I mean, if you know four trucks, you really, you really can see this and 
recognize the key, recognize the stack, recognize the gauges and the steering wheel. Okay, let me tone down the fan just a little bit. It's getting to be a warm April day. So also let me get the grammar just for one more second. So here, as you can see, 136,653 miles. The average around town and mixed usage happens to be 14.9. And that's the whole rub on EcoBoost, right? So Ford really wanted to, it to be efficient and powerful. The power number on this engine is 365 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. When this number first came out, I remember this. I first, this was a couple months before I met Roman, before I started working at TFL car and truck. And I just remember when the news came out, Ford is introducing the EcoBoost, the 3.5. Um, they did a whole marketing campaign because this is a huge deal. This is the most popular vehicle in the country. They took it also to Baja and they ran this engine um, actually without warning people. They kind of did it and then talked about it later. Uh, they ran it through Baja. They put it through really rigorous type of testing. Then they also put 100,000 miles on one doing crazy jobs around the country or maybe even the continent uh, and then they kind of tore the engine apart and looked inside they were trying to just show people how durable this engine is and we'll talk about how much money Luke had to sp spend uh, to, uh, to, to fix this all right let me kind of brake torque it a little briefly and just kind of accelerate there you go it took a tiny bit to kind of get the turbo working and then because I think partially because there is a aftermarket intake there's a little blow-off valve you could kind of hear it so it's actually kind of fun let me turn the AC back on it's kind of kind of fun to kind of hear some of those noises of course it doesn't have the V8 growl that everybody loves and the horsepower was a little bit greater than the V8s, so the V8s of the era were about 360. This had 365 horsepower, but torque was way more. 420 pound-feet of torque uh, versus like 380 or something um, in the V8s, and the torque comes in early, like really early in the rev range. So let me do another acceleration. By the way, this is a six-speed. And 136,000 miles, ooh, it spun its tires a little bit. That's not a lot of miles for this truck. It's about 10,000 a year, which is kind of an average, uh, or actually le a little bit less than an average for a, kind of a regular daily driver. So this is not a high mileage review, but Luke was telling me about the ownership of this truck. He's had it for about a couple of years. Um, he had to replace the blow-off valves um, so that was kind of an issue and then cam phasers let go in this engine and he spent upwards of four thousand bucks at the dealership um, fixing this uh, which is a big deal and actually cam phaser issue basically the timing issue for the valves is still a problem talked about today in in, in modern ecoboost engines um, even like 2018 models, 2019s, I heard this in 2020s, and etc., etc., etc. So I don't know if Ford actually totally solved this problem with cam phasers. Sorry, I'm gonna gonna make my turn here. I don't think Ford actually solved this problem all the way. And of course, you might be wondering, all right, well, but what about replacing the turbos? Uh, these are factory turbos, as far as Luke and I know. Um, yeah, so, so original turbochargers. I've talked to several like limo service drivers or fleet drivers um, because this, this engine was in many vehicles, not just the F-150. Um, SUVs had them as well. And they talk about 150,000 miles approximately where you may have to start thinking about replacing turbos. 
depending on the use case, all right? If you're towing trailers, working this engine heavily, 150,000 miles, you might need to do more work on this. Um, and as, as such, you know, Luke just spent, what, upwards of four grand. So he's kind of committed to this truck. I mean, uh, this truck doesn't have, you know, a super, super high value on the used market anymore. I mean, it's getting older. So, uh, yeah. So how, how long will this engine last still? Uh, I guess we'll find out maybe, maybe in a year or two. Uh, but it still drives, I don't know, almost as if it was brand new. Hey, Rowan. That's actually Roman right there in his Mustang. I could still hear the blow off valve. That's so much fun, actually. Um, yeah, so I, I just want to do this video because 2011, people talk about turbocharging now, like Ram just switched over to three liter Hurricane, twin turbo straight six engines in there, Ram 1500 trucks, but Ford did it 13 years prior. Uh, so of course, GM has turbocharged engines in their 2020, they introduced it, they introduced it in 2020 for their Silverado trucks. I think maybe, yeah, I, I believe it was 2020. And yeah, so the world is downsizing. The truck world is about downsizing engines, um, trying to gain more efficiency. We recently did a MPG loop in our brand new 2024 Toyota Tacoma with a turbocharged 2.4 liter. And it was actually very impressive. You should check it out either on tfltruck.com or oldtfl.com where we put all of our news in one place because we do have eight channels. So I just wanted to say thank you for joining me. Um, it's kind of fun to see kind of the original, the OG, uh, one of the first turbocharged mass market pickups in this F-150. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, by the way, this is what the dash looks like. Um, Luke actually kind of replaced the, the factory radio here. There's a kind of a cool screen up here with your compass and time and temperature. So yeah, this, this truck seems to be lasting pretty well. I mean, not, I don't see any cracks on the interior, so it's pretty nice. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time on another TFL truck video. Thanks.